On January 27, 1967, NASA astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee were killed when a fire broke out in their Apollo spacecraft during a test at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Their deaths were a shocking tragedy for the American people and a grotesque reminder of the dangers involved in every aspect of space travel, even in pre-flight preparations on the ground. As the first Apollo flight designed to include a crew, their mission was a crucial step in the American lunar landing program. The accident that claimed their lives resulted in an immediate suspension of the Apollo project while the cause of the fire was investigated. As a result of the probe into the accident, some 1,300 improvements were ultimately implemented before the launch of the next Apollo crew, Apollo 7, in October 1968. Meanwhile, for those who knew them, or who merely admired them for what they knew of them, there remained only the task of respectfully memorializing the men who had been the first Apollo crew. A plaque dedicating the site of the accident as a memorial reads in part, dedicated to the living memory of the crew of the Apollo 1, United States Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Virgil I. Grissom, United States Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Edward H. White, United States Navy Lieutenant Commander Roger B. Chaffee. They gave their lives in service to their country in the ongoing exploration of humankind's final frontier. Remember them not for how they died, but for those ideals for which they lived. Grissom had lived out those ideals as the second American to fly in space when he piloted the Liberty Bell 7 Mercury space capsule in July 1961 and during his second space flight aboard Gemini 3 with John Young in March of 1965. White had been the first American and the second person ever to conduct an extravehicular activity when he performed the first spacewalk of the American space program during his June 1965 Gemini 4 space flight with James McDivitt. Chaffee had enjoyed a remarkable progress as one of NASA's brightest in the years following his graduation from Purdue University in 1957. He served in the United States Navy and pursued his Master of Science degree at the Air Force Institute of Technology, accumulating more than 2,000 hours of flying time as a pilot in jet aircraft before he was chosen to be an astronaut in 1963. He was selected for the Apollo 1 flight in March 1966. Grissom, White, and Chaffee, each unique in their approach, each celebrated in their success, each remembered in their sacrifice. And yet, even as each was memorialized for his individual accomplishments, all three also shared a collective legacy as members of the American team of astronauts during the first era of space exploration, when the very term astronaut still sounded somehow fantastic to the average citizen. And in that larger context, and in the subsequent achievements of those whose work they most directly influenced during their lives, and by the consequences of their untimely deaths, the Apollo 1 crew also shared, in a very real way, in each moment their fellow astronauts spent in orbit around the moon and exploring amid the ancient lunar dust. In a fitting nod to the past, and to the role that they played in humanity's ultimate success in reaching its first milestone amid the stars. There are craters on the moon that have been named Grissom, White, and Chaffee. And perhaps even more appropriate, in a knowing gesture that ensures their place amid the fondest hopes of the future. In the sloping landscape around the landing site of NASA's Mars Exploration Rover Spirit, there are now three mounds known as Grissom Hill, White Hill, 
and Chaffee Hill, the Apollo 1 hills on the surface of Mars. <laughs>